I've got a new toy. Let's get into it. Let's see what this is all about. So I wanted to chop up some old wood that I had at the back of the garden and I was doing it by hand and I thought, sod this, let's get a chainsaw. I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I'm not going to be doing that much chopping. So I didn't want to get a steel or anything like that. But I got this, Dean Q, that's a hardware store in the UK. Cost me 60 pounds, 70 pounds. So, the cover, there'll be the little mixer, fuel and oil mixture, and here's the chainsaw. It is a 1.6 kilowatt, a 45 uh, centimeter or 450 mil cutting blade, which you obviously need to assemble. Pretty light. Decent size. There we are. Alright, let's look at the instructions and see how it goes on. So it says to make sure that the chain brake is in the back position, which I've done. Undo these nuts. Undo those. Put this off. Drive sock sprocket behind the clutch. I need to put the chain on. There's the chain. The cutting blade, or the cutting tooth, which is this one here, is facing the back, so that this, when it's going around in this direction, is what cuts. Okay. That looks good. Make sure it's on the little cog at the back there. And then I guess if I pull this tight, not too tight, but it's enough for it to sit in the slot on the chainsaw guide. Like so. There we go. And I guess you put this back on again. In fact, you've got a picture there of the direction of the chain, so it's got to be in that orientation. Let's back on again. Now, ah, right, so now you need to adjust this little screw here on the front, which turns this pin here in or out. That's got to line up with this hole. So, and then by rotating it, it's now going to make the chain tighter or looser by tensioning it. Let's put these screws back on again. I think I'll leave them loose just until I get the tension right. Feels good. Maybe a little bit looser. All right, we'll try that and see. It says always, always check the saw chain tension before use. After the first cuts and regularly during use, approximately every five cuts upon initial operation, new chain can can lengthen considerably. This is normal during the break-in period, so you need to adjust it as you go. I guess we're in. One other thing that's important to note is in the back here, depends on the ambient temperature, is the carburetor. And there's a little um, arrow, you can just about see it there. And it says in the instruction manual, when it's below five degrees for winter, you take off this little plastic guide here, reverse it, 
and put it back again. And what that does is it takes the heat and puts it towards the carburetor to stop it from freezing. But as it's fairly mild at the moment, um, the instruction manual, let me just make sure I've got that the right around. Yes, yeah, so I need to face the arrow to the left, point it towards the little sun. So warm, cold. Cover back on, lock it into place. The next thing to do, here's your little primer, is uh, let's get some fuel in it, 25 to one ratio. Okay, the petrol cap here. Now we've got to mix this with a 25 to one ratio. You put the oil this side, petrol this side. Two stroke oil for lawn mowers and lights. All you do is go to one of the corresponding lines on the measure and then do the same with the oil. So I have just about a halfway between this line and this line. So all I need to do is go halfway between this line and this line with the oil. And I've gone far too much. So we can pour some of that back. No problem. chain lubricant. The product is not filled with chain oil. It is essential to fill the product with chain oil before using. Never operate the product without chain oil. Use lubricated oil SAE 10W by 30 all year round. So look here, 10W, oh 10W40. There we go, 10W40, that was lucky. So, moment of truth. So, engage the chain brake. That's down. Switch on. Press primer eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Putty full choke, done that. Pull cord handle four times fully press choke knob, pull starter handle and engine starts. All right, so pull this starter handle four times. Okay, fully press in choke, done that. Pull starter handle until engine starts. Okay, I'm gonna put it down on the floor, but it's a bit easier.
So, is this worth the money? Is it better than a steel? No, it's not better than a steel. Because if you're buying a steel, you're buying it probably because A, you've either got the money, or B, you're a professional. Maybe you're a tree surgeon, all the rest. I think the more important question is, what do you need your chainsaw to do? And if, like me, you're chopping down the odd branch, or you're chopping up wood for a log burner, then to ask the question, is this better than a steel? Absolutely it is, 100%. Why would you spend money on a proper industrial chainsaw when you can buy this for probably about 20% of what you would spend on a steel? And I've got nothing against steels, by the way, but I always think it's worth mentioning. Whenever you're buying anything, have a think about what you're using that product for. If you can afford it, of course, buy the best you can. But if you just want something as a hobbyist, etc., you need to use a chainsaw once in a while probably in the more winter months, etc., and maybe the odd bit of pruning in the summer, you can get one of these. It's from B&Q, which is a local hardware store in the UK. Um, it's dead easy to use. It's lightweight, simple pull handle. It's got the safety feature with the choke on the clutch. And you can see how easy that it went through those logs. It did it just like any other professional chainsaw would do, but for a fraction of the cost and you can see it's pretty lightweight it doesn't really weigh much at all so as long, long as you look after it and follow the instructions ensuring that you use the right fuel mixture which is a 25 to 1 ratio that you prime it the number of times that you need to that you use a choke etc and importantly on this side here this little filler cap is for the oil and you've got to make sure you've got to use the right oil it says 10w40 for summer months maybe 10w30 in the winter so so long as you got that then you're good to go and you got something that actually saves you so much time and effort so my recommendation is yes get one of these save the money you don't need to spend money on a great big chainsaw if you're only using it once in a while i'll show you exactly the link on how to get this and it'll come up in the description i'll also put a little link card there as well Okay, so look, I hope you found this useful. My name is Groovon. I do a lot of this sort of stuff where I give you my honest opinion. I'll try and use the product and really get an idea of actually what it's like to try and feed back to you guys whether you think you should buy or not buy it. Okay, so look, I hope you found this useful. We all say it, I know, but consider subscribing if you like this sort of thing because I do loads of these sorts of comparison videos where I try and give you a real indication and use the product and give you my honest opinion whether I think the product is good or bad, pros and cons. So that saves you time and money if you're not quite sure on whether you want to buy the product. And you'll see just here and here, there's some other cracking videos I've done around the same sort of theme of product reviews. So look, thanks for watching. Till next time, bye for now. Let's move on, cause it's time to move on.